Hi everyone. We're back at B&Q and I told you there'd be a second episode. Let's go into a little bit more detail about exactly what happened when she hit my car. So it was actually Monday, the day that the video went out, that this incident happened. All I was doing, I was just heading to B&Q for a click and collect. I always try and park in this end space that I'm in, or something similar. Because if you're in an end space, honestly, you've only got potential for one car to one side. And I always try and push the car as close as I can do to this curbside if I've got a parking space like this and that's to minimize risk and what I mean about minimizing risk is you only really have to think about one car one side of you so the chances of someone actually uh, parking into that space next to you and clipping your car is probably halved but obviously not in my case <laughs> A lot of people have asked me about how my dash cam was still recording after I'd left the vehicle. Now, it is a VFO A129 Pro, and it's the Duo because it's got the one in the back as well, and it has got a parking function. But it wasn't the parking function that actually recorded this incident. Um, this car that it's in, this BMW 3 Series, uh, the actual ignition and the electronics stay on for a fair period of time, even though you've left the vehicle. And it's this that actually kept the dash cam running. And luckily enough, it was within, it's probably about five minutes or so, it was within that five minutes of me exiting the car that the lady in the Ford actually hit mine. So that was down to pure luck, nothing else. So when I came out of the shop and saw the damage to my car, it's that heart sinking feeling of, oh no, what's gone on? And what I'd like to do is just to apologize to the guy who was actually reversing into the space next to us. Um, I actually asked him whether he'd reversed into my car. Um, that was as soon as I'd come out. It wasn't him. Um, luckily enough, we found out who it was, but what did I do after that? Well. Um, your mind goes through all kinds of things. Where are they? I started looking around um, to see whether you could see anyone um, even driving off. What I actually did then was I had a walk around the car park and had a little look to see whether um, there were any cars parked with obvious signs of damage. And funnily enough, um, I did actually walk past her vehicle because she parked only just the other side. Have a look. When I couldn't find anything obvious, it was obviously time to go home, but little did I know that that woman had finished shopping in B&Q and she was going back in a car. So I waited till I got home 
to have a look at the footage and you can imagine my relief when I found out that it had all been recorded and I'd found the guilty party. What would have gone on if I hadn't have had that footage? Well, it would have been a simple case of me getting the car repaired. Would I have gone through the insurance? I honestly don't know. It depends on the actual cost. Sometimes if it's only a couple of hundred pounds, you may be better off paying for the actual damage yourself out of your own pocket. But if it's going to run into a thousand more, that's what insurance is for. So you've just got to weigh it up. But luckily enough, that's not going to happen. When I told the police what had got on, they virtually said straight from the off that they wouldn't be getting involved with this incident because it was on private land. Now that was a little bit of a disappointment, but what I actually did then, I waited 24 hours and then got back in touch with the police because I wanted to find out whether this lady had reported this incident to them. And there was no report of this incident within that first 24 hours. So I pushed a little more. I was told that because it was private land, that it's nothing to do with them. And I sort of, I wouldn't say corrected them on it, but I told them that about legalization, if it's private property and it has public access, it's governed by the Road Traffic Act. And this is information that I knew. And it took a couple of times of me being passed over to a, a higher um, authority, if you like, for me to get an answer from them. And they did eventually give me a call back and say that two offences had been committed. First of all, she left the scene of the accident. She didn't make any reasonable attempt to get in touch. She should have maybe um, left a note on the car or at the very least gone back into B&Q and told B&Q that she's just hit someone in the car park. So that was one offence. And the next offence was what I've just mentioned. She didn't report this incident to the police within 24 hours. Unfortunately, the police aren't going to do anything about this, even though two offences have been committed and that's a big disappointment. I can see where they're coming from, what the police have got to do. They've got to categorise different incidents. Um, don't forget no one's been injured in this situation. The car isn't a write-off. Um, the insurances seem to have, well, I don't know about the third party's insurance, um, but my insurance has even waived the excess. So they know for a fact that that's going to get sorted. So I sort of understand it from a police perspective that they're not going to do anything about this. But for me, that's still pretty poor because it doesn't act as a deterrent to other people who do this constantly. And this is a, this is a scourge of these car parks that we're in, that this happens many, many times. And it's why our insurance premiums actually go higher and higher and higher. The amount of accidents and dinks and dents that happens to people doors in car parks is colossal. So for me, I wish it had gone the other way. I would have rather picked up the tab myself and this woman been reported for these offences. So is there anything that you could do to potentially protect yourself from this happening to you? Um, yes. You could get a dash cam that's got a parking feature. Um, definitely get your dash cams hard wired in by a professional if you don't know how to do it yourself. Um, what else could you do? Reverse into car parking spaces. I know it's easier to get out, but reversing in um, allows your dash cam footage out the front to see who's coming. Um, maybe even get a dash cam with a rear camera. So is there anything else that you can do to minimise risk? Well, yeah, parking. If you think about what I explained at the start about, um, I always try and think about where I'm parking, but even in this scenario, did it do me any good? No, what could have done differently? Well, maybe parked over there in the middle of the car park where it was way quieter and walked a little bit more, but honestly, um, 
you do what you can. You think of these scenarios when you're entering a car park. You do your utmost to try and make sure you leave as much space as you possibly can to that opposite side. There's always people who are going to drive like this lady. And honestly, seeing the footage, as many people said in the comments, I don't think this is the first time that she's done this. For me, I couldn't live with myself if I'd damaged someone else's property. I know there's people out there who morally aren't like that. And it's a shame, but it's honestly reality. So do what you can to protect yourself. At the end of the day, it's only metal and plastic and a few other bits that can be replaced and can be repaired. It's what we have insurance for. Um, don't let it upset you too much because like I said, there's bigger things that we need to worry about. Now it can be frustrating. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope that's been informative and I'll see you all soon.